This week during science, we're going to be learning about dinosaur fossils. Make sure to check out the two YouTube videos linked on Google Classroom before you read with me. Now let's get started on page 27. The name of this article this week is called Pieces of a Dinosaur Puzzle. On the bottom of the page, we see two pictures. The one on the right says a scientist assembling dinosaur bones. So he's putting the bones, the fossils together. Hmm, I wonder what dinosaur this is. A dinosaur skeleton restoration. Restoration means that they're making, they're putting it together again, restoring it. All right, let's read. It says, pieces of a dinosaur puzzle. Most dinosaur fossils date from 65 million to 225 million years ago. Fossils help scientists determine what dinosaurs looked like and how they lived. For example, a dinosaur's teeth reveal whether it ate meat or plants. The size of a limb, like an arm or a leg, can tell if the dinosaur walked on four legs or two. When paleontologists find a complete skeleton, they can assemble it to show what a dinosaur looked like. The dinosaur might come from more than one skeleton of the same type of dinosaur. They build a full model of the dinosaur's body based on the bones they have. They construct bones to replace the ones that are missing to make a complete skeleton. This process is filling in the gaps of missing bones is called a restoration. Many museums display dinosaur models that are restorations. Often the entire skeleton is not made of the real bones, but of, but of copies of the original model. Hmm, I wonder why they wouldn't put the original fossils out at museums. What do you think? Let's turn the page and read on page 28. On the top, it says, James Kirkland, a paleontologist and geologist, brushing off a fossil at a Utah site where scientists have found the fossils of hundreds of small dinosaurs. I wonder how they can tell which one, which fossils belong to which dinosaurs. Kirkland, standing near a full-size model of the newly discovered dinosaur with sharp, curved claws. If you look at his claws, yeah, they are curved. I wonder why he needed curved claws. Paleontologists around the world continue to piece together models of dinosaurs based on newly unearthed fossils. New discoveries add information to our knowledge of past life on Earth. One thing that paleontologists are interested in finding out is what dinosaurs ate. The earliest dinosaurs were small-bodied, fast-moving predators that hunted and ate other animals. They were carnivores or meat eaters. But later, the fossil record shows that two other major groups of dinosaurs existed, and these two groups were both herbivores, or plant eaters. How did these plant-eating dinosaurs evolve from the early meat eaters? This was a mystery, and there was no fossil evidence to provide the answers. In 2002, paleontologists began digging bones out of rocks in east-central Utah. In one location, they found fossils of hundreds of medium-sized dinosaurs with long necks and long clawed hands. They compared the dinosaur skeletons to existing dinosaur bones. When the new bones did not match, the scientists came to an interesting conclusion. They came to an interesting idea. They had discovered a new type of dinosaur. They published their finding in 2005. The new dinosaur was about 4 meters long head to tail. It stood about 1.4 meters tall and might have weighed about 225 to 450 kilograms. It had sharp clawed, curved claws that were 10 centimeters long. 
with almost 1,700 bones excavated between 2002 and 2005, scientists have about 90% of the dinosaur's bones. So that's this dinosaur that they discovered in 2005. On the next page, there's a drawing. It says, a drawing of pieces from the upper and lower jaw from the dinosaur Falcaris with a penny for scale. Its teeth are leaf-shaped for eating plants. Ooh, so this dinosaur ate plants, and it's actually really small because pennies are very small. Okay, so let's read. They named the newly discovered creature Falcarius. Greek for sickle bearer because of its claws. Based on the rocks where it was found, it lived in the early Cretaceous period about 125 million years ago. The sharp curved claws indicated it hunted and ate small animals like its dinosaur relatives. One thing that was so interesting about this new dinosaur was its teeth. They were shaped like tiny leaves. This would be a good shape for shredding plants. Meat-eating dinosaur relatives had blade-like teeth. Falcarius was different from its relatives. Hmm, so they think that because of the claws, this dinosaur ate meat. But because of its teeth, they think it ate plants. Another interesting thing was the pelvic bone that's near the hip of Falcarius. The shape of that bone was broad, providing evidence that the dinosaur had a very large digestive system. That's how it um, digests, how it uses the food and puts the nutrients into the body. A large gut, or like stomach, would be needed if the animal ate plants. The lower legs of Falcarius were stubby. It couldn't run very fast to catch prey. Compared with carnivorous, that means meat-eating relatives, Falcarius's neck was longer and its forelimbs, like its arms, were more flexible. These features made it easier for the dinosaur to reach plants to eat. So the teeth, the hips, and the arms and the legs show us that this dinosaur probably ate plants. Let's turn the page and continue reading on page 30. Ooh, here's a drawing, an artist's conception of the dinosaur Falcarius. So you'll notice the arms and legs make it kind of look like a bird, right? And it had feathers and a long neck. This is such an interesting dinosaur. Altogether, the analysis of these bones revealed something extraordinary. That means amazing. This dinosaur was not just a carnivore like other dinosaur relatives that lived in the Cretaceous period. It also ate plants. It represented a stage between carnivores and herbivores. Oh, so kind of like humans, we eat meat and plants. During dinosaur evolution, two major groups of dinosaurs shifted to plant-based diets, but fossils of dinosaurs that were both meat eaters and plant eaters hadn't been found. Scientists didn't have the information they needed to understand the plant eaters' relationship to their meat-eating ancestors. The Falcarius fossils show this transition in action among one group of dinosaurs. That group is the bird-like meat-eating and plant-eating dinosaurs of the Cretaceous period. Last paragraph. The discovery of Falcarius was a very important piece of the larger puzzle of dinosaur evolution. The dinosaur dig in Utah will continue to provide more information for paleontologists in years to come. The site has fossils of Falcarius babies, juveniles like kids or teenagers, and adults. 
scientists will be able to compare the structural differences between young and adult dinosaurs and between males and females. Scientists will be able to develop more models about how fast the animals grew, at what age they became adults, and how they lived in the environment so long ago. All right, so what did you learn today about dinosaur fossils?